Welcome back boys and girls, today we're going to be doing cookie authentication with Blazor. Quite frankly, their documentation on the topic is quite terrible. All they give you is these OIDC providers, you gotta sign in with a token, identity server. I don't know why they're giving you all this stuff because cookie authentication is super, super simple. I don't understand why you wouldn't have documentation on this topic and overall their documentation is a little bit all over the place anyway. So this is why this video is going to exist. Also, originally the stuff that I'm gonna show you in this video, Chris Sainty, hopefully I pronounce his second name correctly, has helped me create this sample application for you and essentially this dem demonstration. He knows a lot about Blazor. I don't. He published a book on the thing. Go ahead and check it out. I'm going to leave all the links to his stuff in the description and we can go ahead and get started. I will create a new solution in my patron supporters. If you want the source code, you will have to come support me on Patreon. That is the deal. So Blazor cookie authentication is going to be the solution. Uh, the client that we're first creating is going to be the Blazor WebAssembly app. Okay, let's go ahead and create that without any authentication. This will start up. Let me put this in full screen. Now, uh, the first thing that is going to happen is we will want to CD into client. Uh, let's just make sure that we can run the application. And there we have it. So if I open this up, I get the application. All cool. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger because well, we're going to have to be looking at things. If I refresh this, uh, the page is coming from effectively a development server. When you're going to publish this, it's just going to be a static file. What we want is because we are going to have cookie authentication, we are going to want an actual web server with this. And chances are you're going to have an API that comes along with this. So let's go ahead and add another project. This will be our, and uh, not a Blazor app, but rather a server type of empty. You can call this API if you want to, but let's go ahead and create this. Having the server allows you to follow the backend for frontend philosophy. Here, all we have to do is add the client to the server. And if you watch my spa samples, what I would tell you to do is go ahead and add some middleware for proxying your requests to the spa development server here, because it's C sharp, it can be integrated into the server. You essentially just have to add a package, which is going to allow you to serve your Blazor app from an ASP.NET Core server. We're not going to actually need to run our client directly. So let's go ahead and close this terminal window. I'm going to add my or bring up my Nugget packages over here. Since I'm on Windows, all of my keybinds are messed up. So I'm going to be a little bit handicapped over here. I'm going to lo look for web assembly and dot server. So this is the package that I want. So let's go ahead and add it to the server. Once this is added, we can go ahead and say app. Type something like Blazor and you're going to have use Blazor framework files. And then for the rest of the endpoints, they will really be your API. So preferably what you want to do is you want to create a group, which is going to be called API. Go ahead and put this into a variable. And now you map get onto this group. Okay, let's go ahead, bring back my terminal over here. I'm going to CD into the server and run this. There we have it. Let's go ahead and launch this. And first of all, nothing is going to display here. That's because the Blazor application is actually going to load from this index HTML file over here. So what we have to do is we have to say that on the app, there should be a map fallback to file. And this file is going to be index.html. Let me call on the end here. Let's save this. And I will actually have to cancel this application. I'll say .NET watch no hot reload. And there we have it. So now we have the application, but without any of the styling to get the styling, you will have to use static files over here that should restart. And now we have our full application. Let's just make sure that the counter is working and it is. So just not to confuse if I refresh this, uh, you still don't get server side rendering, right? So the components are not being server side rendered. This is not the .NET 8 feature. All that we have done here is now our ASP.NET Core API is giving us a Blazor application and it's living on the same address. This is no longer just a static file in some kind of bucket, right? 
What we want to do next is we effectively want to start creating our endpoints for authentication. So first of all, let's go ahead and create an endpoint to display the claims principle, which is going to be our user. So I will have to import this, the one key bind that I managed to remember. <laughs> so for the claims, we're going to go to dictionary. We're going to extract the key from here, or actually this is going to be the claim type and then the claim value. So I'm not going to be building up a login form. All I want to do is effectively trigger an HTTP request from my Blazor application to my server, and that is going to automatically put a cookie into the browser. So this is a little bit for later, right? So I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, uh, but another endpoint that we want to have is map post. We're going to be effectively logging in and here you can put some additional information like your user manager your sign-in manager your registration login form etc i'm just gonna say it's blank for now i'm going to assume that whatever form or data you're gonna send there you're gonna have that relevant thing for your own relevant scenario so we're going to sign in and uh, we are here gonna require a claims principle inside the claims principle we're gonna have a claims identity inside the claims identity we're going to have claims so in the claims let's just have an identifier we're going to generate a new good just to string this as I struggle with keybinds. Let's go ahead and format this. If you're looking at this and you watched my previous tutorials, you already know what is missing an actual authentication service. So builder services add authentication. We're going to add cookie authentication. And let's just make sure that we call this cookie authentication schema. Go ahead, copy this value, place it over here we're going to be signing in under this authentication schema. So we specify cookie and the identity is coming from the cookie authentication schema as well. So we're going to have to say cookie here as well. Okay. Amazing. So coming back to the client on the right hand side over here, I'll have pages and I'm just going to go to index right underneath. Hello world. I'm going to put a div over here. I'm going to place a button and this is going to be my login button. Uh, what to do here, you all probably know if you have touched Blazor. Let's go ahead and create a task. This is going to log in. And here we're going to inject an HTTP client. This is going to be the client. Make it a property. And then on this client, we can post async your login form to the API login endpoints. And uh, let me make this post as JSON async. So I can just say, look post my empty form or whatever it was. You're going to have some kind of result and you may want to process this. I'm not going to be doing anything with this, so I'm not actually going to uh, process this result again, because this request is going to be on the browser side and it's interoperating with the fetch API. The cookie is actually already going to be stored in the browser by the time you receive results. So perhaps here you just want to check has it failed? Uh, do you get any validation, etc.? Do you need to update the form? So that's what you do with the result. Me personally, because I know it's going to succeed. I don't need to do anything with it. My objective here is to show you the bare bones. Then on click, we're going to have the login handler. And there it is. Coming back to the browser, we have the login button. Let me clear this and let me just make sure that I don't have any cookies from before. It doesn't look like I have. Let's go ahead to the network tab. I'm going to log in. Uh, the success code, success code, <laughs> the response is 200. And if we take a look at the headers over here and the response headers, we have the cookie. Okay. So the cookie is stored in application over here. And now because we actually do have this cookie, if I open a new tab, we're going to go to the API user. We're going to be able to retrieve our user because again, if you know anything about cookies, they get attached automatically to each individual request that you make to the backend. So here, if we take a look at the default request in the request headers and I collapse them accidentally here, you're going to see the cookies being attached automatically. Now we're going to, I'm going to look in the documentation because I don't actually remember the names of all these services, but you want your authentication state provider and you want your cascading authentication state. In order to get these things, you're going to need to install a package where it tells you to do that somewhere here. So uh, these two over here. So let's just 
uh, grab the package. We're gonna come back to the code. Commands, again, go to nugget. Uh, let's paste this over here. We're gonna find the package and this package, again, because we're authenticating and authorizing on the client. This goes on the client, okay? Uh, once this is there, uh, we wanna go to program CS and register a service. So in the builder, services, there's going to be authorization core. Let me call it on the end and we're going to add another class on here. Cookie authentication state provider. Make this inherit from the authentication state provider. Implement all the relevant things. And this is a task which returns authentication state. If we take a look at the authentication state, all that it wants you to do is return a claims principle. Simple enough. So what do we do? We get our constructor because we need to make a fetch request to fetch the user metadata. We're gonna have our HTTP client. Let's go ahead and inject it in here, field. Hopefully you kind of know what I'm doing here, get from JSON async. I will just deserialize it to dictionary string string, uh, api.user, so writer already kind of knows what I wanna do here. This is going to be my user. Let's format the code and actually want to await on this and then finally return a new authentication state and here there's going to be a claims principle and then a claims identity and then a bunch of claims and actually this array is something that we want to get from the user over here so uh, let's give this a little bit of space on the user this is going to be a dictionary all we're going to do is from the key value pair that we get we're going to generate a new claim. So key value, key, key value, value, format the code, and this should produce our authentication state. Now we want to register this as a service. So we go to client uh, programs, CS file, we go to services, we're going to add a scoped cookie authentication state provider, and this is going to be an authentication state provider, and I actually managed to put these the wrong way around. Go ahead and put it this way, semicolon on the end. Now we have a mechanism for loading user authentication data. And if we come back to the documentation, we want cascading authentication state. Uh, let's go ahead, grab this. We're gonna go to, I think it is app razor and wrap the router in this thing. So let me cut this, place it at the bottom here, format the document. And there we go. So at the moment, I think I'm going to get an error because I'm missing a namespace. So yeah, let me refresh. Uh, let's take a look actually at the terminal. And if I scroll up a little bit here, there is going to be this RZ uh, code that basically says that there is an unexpected name over here. So all that this is, is I'm missing a import in my imports uh, razor file. Okay. Uh, oh, didn't mean to open shared. Let's go ahead and collapse this, bring this in here. So using, bam, format this, and there we have it. So let's come back to the browser. Let's go ahead and bring up the network log. We're gonna clear everything. I'm gonna actually make it just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna refresh here. And what we're gonna see is as the requests go right at the bottom, we're making an automatic call to load the user information. And now we're actually gonna have access to a claims principle inside our Blazor application. The way that we wanna access the claims principle is actually described in the documentation with the authorized view component. So if I scroll down, authorization, authorized view. So if you have something like this, you can have the context user identity name, right? So we can grab that. Let's say we will come back over here. I'll take a look at index razor. Let's go ahead and just whack this over here. I'm gonna select my first claim of ID. So on the context, find first is not available. So user find first, let's grab ID and then display the value, okay? We'll say that this is your ID. Let's come back to the browser, refresh this. We're not gonna be able to see the identifier if we come back. Uh, the reason for that, if we take a look at the cookie authentication state provider, uh, I think the reason is pretty crappy. You actually have to say uh, something in here for the claims identity. I'm not sure why you would have this, but uh, that's what has to happen. So 
Once uh, the user is actually loaded, you have the user state. The rest of the questions that you might have, like authorizing based on uh, policies, roles, etc. I'm gonna say, go to the documentation. I think this would be the hardest part of actually figuring out how to wire up your projects in order to obtain that cookie. Uh, one last bit that I would like to show you here is if I hide the terminal. We have our cookie authentication state provider. Let's say that uh, I'm gonna go to application. And I'm going to clear the cookie, okay? So I'm no longer signed in. I go to the console and I have object reference not set to an instance of an object. If uh, the user indeed is null, let's go ahead and return a new authentication state with new claims principle and an empty identity. That is how you effectively handle that. And let's actually say is not because if we send back an empty object, potentially it might actually well be an empty dictionary. So if uh, we don't have uh, more than uh, zero claims, uh, you know, uh, stuff is bad. So refreshing this, I don't know what this error is specifically, but that basically cleans things up on the UI side. And this counts as an empty authentication session. Now, if we go to index razor, what we want to do over here after access a successful login, we actually want access to our authentication state provider and perhaps just the cookie authentication state provider. What we're gonna do is on the client program CS, we're going to duplicate this line over here and we're going to register our cookie authentication state provider. Here, we're going to resolve this from a service provider, so SP. Again, as soon as I remember how to type, get required service, get cookie authentication state provider. And that's what that looks like. I can put this brace on a different line. Now we can use the cookie authentication state provider or on our index to actually inject it over here. Let's say instead of a client, so cookie auth or your auth service. And on the cookie authentication, we want to effectively try to log in. Let's go ahead and generate this method. It should be an async task, same as the previous one. Let's come back to index razor. We're gonna take this, we're going to await on it here and format the file real quick. So logging in will look something like this where we're gonna have the client, we're gonna sign in and if this has been successful, this perhaps may return the user or maybe we want to try to load the user this way. So private, async task we want effectively a factory method though that is going to return us a claims principle and we're gonna say get user state async take all of this let's cut it place it over here here we're going to return a new authentication state and here we're gonna say get user state async this is just going to be the user that we want to wait on here and then pass it over here okay so super reusable after a successful login over here, we want to do get user state async. We have our user, we're going to await on this here. And then we're going to use a on this and actually maybe a little bit clearer where this method comes from. There is a notify notify authentication state changed, which is going to accept a task of authentication state. So it can actually supply the get authentication state async without awaiting it. Let's remove this over here and the authentication state. Let's remove this from here and here. Format the file a little bit better job on formatting. And there we have it. So what this is going to give us now is if I refresh, I press login and that is going to update my authentication state right after I log in. And as I want to log out, I want to do exactly the same. Okay. And I think this is pretty much it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Again, please go and support Chris. It is thanks to him that I'm capable of bringing you this video as well as my patron supporters. If you would like the source code for this video as well as, well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. I'll be very grateful and a big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comment section. I personally have a C-sharp course that is out. If you would like to know C-sharp as I do, I highly recommend you take a look at it. And with that, thank you for watching again and I hope you have a good day.